Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another fantastic episode of Truth Wanted. I'm your host, as always, Objectively Dan. This is the live call-in show. Happens every week, Fridays at 7 p.m. Central Time, where we talk about what people believe and why. And my guest joining me today, you know, if I was in high school and I wanted to get my notes, I'd get my notes from Autumn, because notes from Autumn is joining us today, or just Autumn for short. Autumn, welcome to Truth Wanted. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so Autumn, you are, I would describe you as an up-and-comer. Well, you've been doing it for, what, six months now? You, you're, you've been uh, doing the atheist YouTube thing for a little bit now. and Not even, just since April, actually. So since- what, that, that's like four months? In 2020, April was like five years ago, I think. So you, you're fair. a veteran That's at this fair. point, I, I, in my mind. But yeah, you you started making some content early this year, um, and you have a degree in human development, and you use that degree of human development into your perspectives in your videos, which is kind of cool, right? Correct, yeah. Um, I'm mostly using uh, social psych and developmental psych, but... I do talk about biological factors, social factors, all that stuff. So, and for yeah, people who so- don't know, human development is uh, it encompasses biology, sociology, and psych. It's kind of like a combo. Yeah, so always, always like to have lots of content creators on this show in particular. But what I found was kind of interesting was you know we had talked outside the show, and you had told me that you've actually been an atheist for a couple of years now. I think like four years now, you said, but you just decided to make content earlier this year. Like, so what's, why start making stuff now? Damn, we all lost our jobs. I lost my (laughs) job and I was collecting unemployment and I, I got in a lucky situation where I got to go back and stay with my family for a little bit. Um, so I didn't have to pay rent. So I was like, well, I'll just spend my time. Like I'm working for atheist activism. Like I'm working for YouTube and, uh, yeah, I've been doing it and loving it. It's been a really fun time. Yeah, and that's cool. I'm I'm glad that you decided to turn what's been broadly a negative for everybody to a positive. You know, having more time to make videos. That's 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 another perspective to look at this situation that we've been in for the past couple of months. So uh, yeah, like uh, your videos, like I said before have a human development kind of focus on them. Uh, what What's some of the stuff that you've talked about in your videos in particular? So I've talked about the science behind, like, for instance, I did an angry atheist video and I talked about what actually causes feelings of anger besides just, you know, being an atheist and you're mad at God. It's like, well, let's look at exactly why those feelings and uh, like aggressive behavior can occur and, you know, and see if it actually is because of atheism or if it's because of other factors, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so what did you discover when you made that video? Well, I basically, I didn't discover, I don't know. I didn't really discover anything. I basically talked about how aggression is a learned behavior. Mm-hmm. Um, they've done a lot of studies on basically modeling aggressive behavior for children or, you know, all like in all sorts of settings. And it's like the more aggression you're exposed to, the more likely you're, you are to mimic those behaviors. And uh, basically, I just made the case for if this is where like aggression comes from and if frustration comes from having your goals blocked, you know, these feelings, when you're seeing somebody who's maybe an atheist who happens to be angry in that moment, it's not that they're angry because of their atheism. It's like, let's look at the other factors as to why someone might be behaving, might be behaving a certain way. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And like, it is like, it is a real phenomenon. This idea of like, being the angry atheist like it seems to happen where the people go through these emotions like after they've recently deconverted like i think a lot of people can attest to having that experience um so like if if it's if it's from a perspective of well 
maybe it's more about goals being blocked when this has happened. Like, can you expound on that a bit? Like what's actually happening there when people go through like this angry atheist phase? So, well, for the angry atheist phase, I mean, it could be for a myriad of reasons. You, you could maybe feel like you've been lied to. And so your frustration, if frustration comes from when your goals are blocked, then your goal would be to have people be honest with you, right? Mm. And when that need or that desire isn't being met, that turns into frustration. You're frustrated because you felt you feel like people maybe deceived you or you feel manipulated. And maybe maybe you weren't, but it doesn't mean that you don't feel that way. That could be one example. But I mean, it's such a broad, broad thing to talk about. There's such a broad spectrum of people with so many different experiences. It's like, I didn't happen to have an angry atheist phase. I feel like I got, I kind of got lucky because by the time I realized my atheism, I was ready to move on and I was ready to do something positive because I go, if this is the only life I have, I want to make it the best that I can. And so I, I feel like it was a matter of luck for me, but everybody's going to have a different experience with how they process this their time of deconstruction and maybe, you know, what they went through. Yeah. Like I, I, you know, that's interesting that you say that not everybody goes through it. Cause I definitely went through that phase. I remember I was like browsing r slash atheism every day. Like I was just watching all, all the videos and stuff. And, and I'm not like typically, I, I wouldn't describe myself as like an angry person. Um, so I guess it was just, I was just mad at this particular topic. I think I don't think it affected the rest of my demeanor, but whenever this topic came up, like I just had nothing but negative things to say about it. Um, and now that, of course, I've been talking about this for, you know, uh, about two years now and um, just having conversations in general with it, I'm much more acceptant of the position that I'm in. But I, I think part of it stemmed from, yeah, like you said, like I did feel like I was kind of being lied to, I guess. I had this idea that I was going to, be a Christian my whole life, do Christian things. Um, I had goals for maybe working in a nonprofit, like a Christian nonprofit. And when I realized I can't really do that anymore, like I kind of had this crisis of identity almost. It's like, well, I'm not a Christian anymore. So what am I? What am I doing? What's going on? And how come other people aren't thinking about the same things that I'm thinking about? So I can see how people can go through those phases um and for some people i don't know if it, it ever stops as a phase but uh, i also see that you know sometimes there is a stereotype in the atheist community that we're all angry all the time and so people watching other content where people are angry you know they might pick up on some of that too um especially if they were kind of feeling the fire from being burned out from their own religion so yeah, it's good to talk about. And and if anybody wants to talk about this stuff, by the way, this is a live call in show. We are live on YouTube right now. We got a couple open lines and we got some new call screeners tonight, uh, one of which has a birthday today. So I want to give a quick shout out to Kurt, who is training to be a call screener tonight. Thanks, Kurt, for joining in and happy birthday to you, bud. Uh, so, yeah, going back to you, though, Autumn, uh, what is some of the stuff that you've been doing recently on your channel? So recently, uh, I took a risky move and I delved into a philosophy. I've been kind of doing a debate review between the debate between Christopher Hitchens and Dr. William Lane Craig at Biola University and giving my thoughts on what I think now as an atheist and I, what I can recall of how I used to think about these arguments as a Christian um, and kind of comparing what I used to think to what I think now. And uh, it's been pretty fun for me. Uh, I really like philosophy, even though I'm not like crazy good at philosophy. I, I don't know as much as like rationality rules um, or somebody like that, but uh, it's been fun and I've learned a lot from doing it, so. Well, here's the thing. We need more people talking about philosophy that don't look like me. And what I'm saying is like just white dudes on the internet just talking philosophy. You know what I mean? Like if you look at the history of philosophy, it's it's lots of white dudes 
a lot of white dudes that are talking about stuff. And that's not to say that there aren't white dudes that have contributed to the history of philosophy. It's just, you know, sometimes we don't often bring up that kind of work um, and, and, and we kind of downplay it sometimes. So I'm glad that there's more people who don't look like me that are talking about that kind of stuff. Cause that's definitely super, super important. Um, and I, I, to a little be fair, oh, mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to be, I was going to say, to be fair, I am also cis and white. So if you're watching that's true. and you happen to not be cis and white and you have stuff to say on this, I encourage you to make a YouTube channel, make videos and talk about this stuff. Cause we need more voices and we need more diversity. Yeah. And a little birdie told me that is, uh, you were telling me the other day that you were actually planning on releasing a full video on your deconversion story pretty soon, right? Yeah, that's probably still a few months out because I'm still learning how to make videos. I'm still learning all the tech and I want to do a really good job with that video because I think, I think the full story is going to be like a little bit deeper and I, I just want it to be good honestly just like I I like to be creative and I have like a certain vision for how I want to relay my story and I want to make sure I do a really good job of, with it and that I'm really proud of it basically. yeah yeah because originally one of the things you know we had talked about was oh I want to talk about your story and stuff and you're like wait wait I want to make a whole video about it so it's like okay I'll w wait for you to do that um and and you know we'll, we'll maybe we, we can talk about it again after it comes out but yeah, really glad that you're here on the show tonight. I also hear that you have a second channel that you're working on too, right? Yeah, we're just going to prom promote everything today. Yeah, the yeah. second channel is going to be a, a little more random. Like right now, it looks super random. I've got like one psychology video and like two ukulele videos that I threw on there. And it, the, the channel is called Footnotes from Autumn. Little joke, like... You know, it's not the major stuff, but uh, I plan on making some uh, vegan videos, like talking about uh, basically just vegan recipes or tips on how to go vegan because I've been going through that recently and it's been fun learning new stuff. I, I'm like such a nerd. I love to learn new stuff. And so since I've already gotten in the groove of making YouTube videos, I'm like, I'm going to make videos on everything now. So, yeah, yeah, it's 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 fun. And uh, yeah, good luck talking about veganism on the internet because you know there there's the thing a lot of people they don't like it when you talk about veganism on the internet don't know what it is it's just a thing uh especially around here sometimes but anyway um uh, I, I i oh sorry. no go ahead i keep cutting there's a little delay so i keep cutting you off i was gonna say maybe i can create a plant-based safe space a plant-based <laughs> safe space did you come up with that <laughs> Yeah, I did. That is, I like I that. that I have never heard that before. That is awesome. A plant-based safe space. You need to copyright that. This is already going live. Somebody's going to steal it. Oh, man. Well, okay. Don't steal it. Don't steal it. But before we get to calls, uh, we'll get to those in a second. I wanted to tell a story about something that happened at my work the other day. Um, and so it, two of the guys at my work were starting to talk politics. And then they asked me a direct question about something. And I work at a place where most of the people are pretty conservative. Um, so, you know, I give my take on something and somehow the conversation goes from politics to religion. Um, and then from religion to like abortion specifically, which was really interesting. But anyway, they're talking about religion and stuff. And uh, I, I, I decided to let the cat out of the bag. And uh, I let uh, one of my guys know at this point, it's just me and another guy in this conversation. And I say, well, I to tell you the truth, I on Friday nights, I actually uh, moonlight as like a host on, uh, you know, the show that's produced by the atheist community of Austin. So, yeah, I'm actually an atheist. And, and I talk about this kind of stuff every week. And the guy said something to me that I don't know if this has happened to you, Autumn, and maybe people who you know, our atheists who are watching this show, he said like, oh man, that's cool. Well, you know, I don't judge you any differently for being an atheist, you know, which sounds like a really like nice thing to say, but I've gotten that so much from people when I've told them that I'm an atheist. And here's the thing, like when I was a Christian, nobody ever said that to me when I told them that I was a Christian. So I don't know why people have to preemptively say this thing where it's like, oh, you're, 
an atheist now. Well, well, you know, I don't not going to think of you any differently. Like, isn't that just kind of implicitly rude? Like, imagine if I went up to somebody and said, oh, I'm a Muslim. And they said, oh, well, I, you know, I'm not going to think of you any differently. Like, isn't that just like kind of condescending a little bit? Yes. I mean, I, I get it. Like think, hearing it that way, it's like, yeah, like why do they say that to us? But at the same time, there is this expectation, especially you and I know, because we grew up in the church. It's like some people really do have a hard time being accepted by friends and close family members when they come out of the atheist closet, so to say. Mm -hmm. And so I guess we're just so used to that line. We're in this culture. We're so used to that line of thinking that I never thought about how condescending that might sound, you know, to someone who maybe doesn't know about all those narratives and doesn't know how common it is for people to be rejected for this sort of thing if they're in another culture. But yeah, that is, it's really weird that we do that. Well, the way I think about it is if somebody in my friend group said, oh, I'm gay, you know, the first thing I'm going to say to them is, oh, I'm, I'm not going to think of you any differently. I'm just going to say, cool. All right. Like, I just kind of accept it, you know, but I don't know. I, for some reason, I feel like if you tell people you're an atheist, they have a need to they, they feel they need to, like, defend themselves for a second. Like they have to justify why they believe, you know. Um, and I don't know. I, I get that sense sometimes when I talk to people. I don't know if that's just me. What do you think? I'm sorry. Repeat the question. My laptop was overheating and I got a little distracted. Uh, I was just saying, I, I, I don't feel like I, I, I feel like when people talk to me about this stuff, they feel like they have to justify their belief a little bit. Like they get a little bit defensive if I tell them that I'm an atheist, which is like, no, I that you don't have to defend yourself right then and there. Like I'm just expressing who I am. Yes, it's because, you know, they're confronted with maybe the fact that they might be wrong upon you saying, you know, I'm an atheist. It, or, I mean, it, it could be that. I, I guess I don't want to say it's always one line of thinking, right? So it could be they feel like, oh, like there's people who don't believe in this or confronted with that. But it could also be uh, those narratives that they hear, like we talked about, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I just it's it's a weird quirk of our culture. I think I hope one day that's just not a thing people say, because as soon as you come out, like it's not going to matter to anyone. But we're not there, especially where I'm at in Texas, even in Austin. I mean, it's just it, you'd be surprised. A lot of people think Austin is like this liberal bastion, which I mean, it is. But like, it's still Texas. You know, that's what I try to tell people. It's like you're still going to meet all kinds of people here. Some you know, less accepting than others.